Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Habib Ali and I am an ICT tutor by profession. So welcome back to another lesson. In today's lesson, we are going to be learning about what is a clustered column chart, how to create a clustered column chart, and what is an embedded chart in Excel. Okay, so here we are back on our mileage worksheet again, which we're going to use to tackle today's question. So let's go ahead and have a look at the question of the day. So the question or the questions are, create a two-dimensional clustered column chart using the cell range A2 all the way to B10. And the second part is asking us to leave it next to the source data as an embedded chart. So this is part of our learning today is what is an embedded chart? What does that mean? We'll even talk about this as well. What does source data mean? And obviously the main part of today's lesson is to learn how to create a two dimensional clustered chart using the cell range A2 all the way to B10. So let's have a look. So the first thing, the first rule I should say everyone, the first rule of creating a chart is your highlighting, the selection of the required cells. You get this part wrong, your entire chart will be incorrect. So I emphasize and I'll repeat again, uh, the first thing you must do is highlight. So when I say highlight, this is what I'm talking about. Whatever, whatever range of cells you want to represent on a graph or a chart. In this particular lesson, we're discussing a column chart. So the selection is very important because whatever you highlight, so in this case, the question was asking us to create a chart based on the cell range A2. So we start from A2 all the way to B10. So this is the data. This is the data that we're going to use to create this column chart. Now this data is actually referred to the source data. So the question, this part here that we, what I said to you earlier, that we will discuss. So this two word that says source data, all it means is the data you are using to create a particular chart. That's all it means, a source data. So this is our source data for this column chart. I hope that is clear. So we've selected the range. Now, if I selected too many cells, or if I went, let's say by mistake, all the way down to, let's say B13, I'll be including three more destinations that I am not being asked to do. Hence, my chart will be incorrect because it will contain too much information. Now, similarly, if by error I selected, let's say, all the way to A2, all the way to B8, again, if I did omit, leave out these two rows here, Oxford and Salisbury, again, my chart will be incorrect because it will have less data than to what has been requested. So, again, I do remind you it is crucial that we select the right amount of data to create the chart. That is rule number one. Please do not forget. So I'm going to highlight this again from A2 all the way to B10. Once I've got my highlighting done correctly, then I go to the insert tab on the ribbon, click on insert. And then I have an entire group here called charts. Now there are many types of charts for this particular lesson. We are discussing a column chart. So this is the option for a column chart here. You can see by the graphic here, it looks like columns. So it's easy way of understanding or identifying a column chart. 
So I'm going to go ahead and click on this. Now it is asking for a two dimensional, so you can see 2D, 3D, etc, etc. So we're going to go straight away and go for a basic two dimensional column chart. Now there are three of three different types. The first one is your clustered column chart. A clustered column chart is the best one to use if, if you're comparing values, a few um, different categories, in this case destination and distance. So this is why we're going to be using a clustered column chart. So I'm going to go ahead and click on it. And just by highlighting and clicking on the column chart, um, look everyone, I have a lovely chart already generated here. Um, I can pretty much understand what this chart is showing me. It's got a small title, okay, maybe not the best, but we can change such things. Um, it's giving me all the distances here from Leeds all the way to Salisbury. So you can see from Leeds to Salisbury, nothing less and nothing more from what I have asked for. So this chart is actually perfect. These numbers here are actually representing the distance. So some of these elements of the graph we will talk about in another lesson. But in this lesson, we, our aim was or is to create a clustered column chart on a selection of data which is our source data let's use the correct terminology so based on our source data we have created a wonderful column chart um, let's go back to the question so now we understand how to create a two-dimensional clustered column chart using a particular range. In this case, it was A2 to B10. It was asking us to leave it to the leave it next to the source data as an embedded chart. Now, this is what we need to understand. What is an embedded chart? Now, when we create a chart by default, it is actually an embedded chart. What that means is basically you have a chart on an existing worksheet where there is data. There is two options or two things you can do with a chart is either have it as an embedded chart, which means it's embedded to this worksheet called mileage. This is what we call an embedded chart. Or the second option is you can have it on a separate worksheet of its own. So an entire graph being displayed on a worksheet on its own. That's what we call a worksheet or a chart worksheet, not embedded. So that would be the opposite of embedded chart. So it's asking us to leave it next to the source data. So just make sure when you do leave it next to the source data that you're not overlapping any of the data. What I'm going to do is simply bring it down. I think will be a better idea. I uh, don't want to be messing with my charts. So I'm just going to click on undo there. And I'm going to just drag it down and bring it down somewhere here I think is a better position. So it's out of the way of the data and it's looking marvelous. So this is how you create a column chart, a clustered column chart. Now you can understand the data very easily, leads all the way to Salisbury showing what the distance is. If you remember, we sorted this data in ascending order by distance. So the smallest was at the top and the largest was at the bottom. So this graph is actually showing this, um, this curve, if you like, or this pattern. So the smallest to the largest in terms of distance. So what a wonderful representation um, to create using this source data for this question. So I believe, just to quick recap, we have answered question here, question one, and the second part of this question as well. So we understand what a two-dimensional clustered column chart is now and how to create one, and we know how to leave it next to the source data. We know what the source data means, and we know what an embedded chart means as well. So that brings us almost to the end of this lesson. 
So this is the end of uh, today's um, lesson. So please do like and share and um, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so. And I shall see you over in the next lesson. So please take care and goodbye.